make it to the city. You don't have to be a doctor or a lawyer to reach that celestial shore. I tell you what the Lord said. The Lord He wants you to see you through. Be holy, be righteous. For this is. day it is. I'm Bishop Iona Locke, and I I wanted to come to you because the Lord had talked to me about something in prayer and told me that I should share this. And of course, we love you and we appreciate you. Uh, of course, we're having all kinds of weather situations today, uh, but we're here because God has sent us a rhema word. And that rhema word for us is found in Second Chronicles chapter number 20, but the situation is, is described there for you where Israel is having a tough time with enemies and their enemies are all around them, much like what's going on here in the United States of America and not only in the United States of America, but globally. God wants to address this on how we handle what's going on. And I know because you're saints, you are handling it. 
I know the power of prayer has gone up from the sanctuary of the souls of the kingdom of God. I know the sainted body of the Lord has not stopped interceding and stopped uprooting and tearing down and uh, turning over all of the works and the weaponry of the enemy. I'm here to encourage you by the auspices of the Holy Spirit for you to continue. I'm here because God sent to tell me, to tell you, be encouraged. Don't you give up. Don't you faint. Don't you fail. Don't you wane. Don't you decide, well, it looks like it's not working. Your prayers are being answered. They are working. Hold fast, hold steady, and stay on target. Stay focused because God is hearing your prayers. Saints of the Most High God, I'm here because God said so. Otherwise, I would not be here. But the Lord loves the saints so. I want you to know everywhere the saints are, God is. Everywhere the saints gather, God is. Everywhere you kneel down and lay prostrate, God is. I want you to know, just like he said in his word, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And where you are, God is. Because in you dwelleth God. You were born by the Spirit. You were called. You were drawn with cords of love and mercy. And God will never forsake you. He will neither relent to come get you. God delivers his own and he's here to deliver us. He has not fainted not one day when you heard the word coronavirus. He has been present. He is present and always will be throughout the enduring of this situation. So God sent me as one of his emissaries, one of those that come, many have come. And so I come with my elder sisters and brothers to share with you this rhema word. Now it is not something that you have not already investigated in the scriptures, but God wants you to look at it again so that your faith will not wane or fail, so that your faith won't implode, so that you'll know assuredly that God is is in the midst of all of this. Well, here we are again out of the second chronicler, chapter number 20, but verse 22 is our emphasis. So let the Holy Spirit paint for you just for a moment what the background is. Here our elder brother, Jehoshaphat, king over Judah and Israel, is having a problem. And the problem is, is he's having a multitude of enemies come against him. Doesn't that sound familiar? The Arabs, which the scripture says, and there was with Arab, Ammon, Moab, there was with them beside. That beside is the Maonites, which are a confederate group of Arab tribes. They came against them also. The multitude was so extensive, it's so expansive, until it was described to the king, it was from one end of the horizon to the other. And so they said it like this in the scriptures, according to St. James, uh, it says like this, it says a multitude. And then it goes on to describe the multitude. It says a great multitude. The word multitude means a variegated group. It means not just one nation, but many nations. So they come together in a confederate against the saints of Israel. So here we are. Here we are today. There is a something that has come as a mass against us. It has come against the United States of America. It has come against Europe. It has come globally against all of humanity that stands on this natural terra firma. So what does Jehoshaphat do? You already learned it in Sunday school, but let me rehearse it again. He says he went to God in great contrition and he prayed. When he prayed, he also called a fast for all of the nation. And so the fast 
was done. The nation came before the king, but they came with their husbands. They came with their wives and they came with their little ones. The singles were also included. They all came to hear what the word of the Lord was. Sure enough, as they prayed and he rehearsed what God said he would do for Israel under the kingship and the leadership of Solomon, their former king. He said, if we have any of these enemies that would come against him and we made contrition to you and we humbled ourselves, then you would hear from heaven and you would forgive our sins and you would heal our land. I'm only picking out the one right now, and that is when these enemies come against us. When these enemies come against us. And when we repent, you would hear from heaven and you would heal our land. So here we are today, and many of the saints have gone through this. Bishops, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, congregations everywhere have reached out to God in repentance and turned and said, God, we need your help. Most said, surely God is in the midst of the saints. God hears us. He says, before you answer, I will call. When you cried, God answered. When you cried to the Lord and said, whatever my part is in this, whatever sin I played in this, I repent, I turn because Lord, we need your help. So here we are right now, sainted body of the Lord, the great believers in this universe. It's you that is the salt of the earth. It's you, it's you. You're the salt and the light. Now watch what happens now. So a prophetic word comes and one stands up and begins to prophesy. As he prophesies, he said, you won't need to fight in this battle. Well, we have a great multitude against us. We have an invisible invading force against us that has reached uh, uh, all across this globe. We have a global enemy. And uh, you say we don't have to fight. He said, no, no, you will not need to fight in this battle. But I, in other words, I will do the fighting. Now, I want you to watch this. Saints of the Most High God, what did God share with me in, in a rhema word, in prayer, in intercession? He said, tell them to praise and to worship me, to praise and to worship me, and I will do the fighting. You praise and you worship me. Now watch the structure of the scripture. What did they do? Did they stay home and praise and worship? No. But Israel was told to go out to the battle and meet the enemy on the battlefield, but go out in a praise and worship. Now, this is what we're going to do. We're going to be submissive and obedience to our governors and to our president. But listen, we're going out to the battle. How do we go out? We go out dressed. We have spiritual weapons and our weapons are not carnal. They're not carnal and they are mighty through God, even to the pulling down of strongholds. I want you to see, sainted body of the Lord, your weapons are powerful. They are praise and worship. We're going to worship and praise. How? First of all, let us be wise enough to put on the whole armor. So that we'll be able, when we praise and worship, to withstand all of the works of the enemy. Put it all on, daughter. Put it all on, son. Mighty men and women of God, put it all on. You can't put half on. You got to put truth on. You got to use the sword of the spirit. You got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. You've got to gird your loins with truth. Your feet have got to be shod with the preparation of the peace and the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can't put it half on. Put it all on. We need you now. We need you right now. God needs you to be fully armed and dressed. Don't allow the enemy to point out, oh yeah, well, they came out with the helmet of salvation, but ain't no peace in their heart. They came out, oh yeah, they're, they're out here praising and worshiping, but ain't no truth about them. They still got the lies going. They still got the gossip going. Put on the whole armor. 
We need you now. We need you right now, beloved. We need you now. And God's going to answer if you will put on the armor. We're going to the battle. And we're not afraid. And we are neither ignorant concerning Satan's devices. We're not slow. And we're not idiots. And we're not ignorant. We're not stupid. And we are not afraid. And we are not cowards. We're going to put it all on. From the head even unto our feet when we'll stand having girded ourselves and having all things to do in God and having to stand we will stand likewise shouted and girdled and mantled head shield sword breastplate all in righteousness beloved lay aside the idioms that the enemy wants to disturb you with we need you now the army must stand and you are part of this great glorious army. We are the army of the Lord and we're here in the earth and this day and time on purpose. It is not unique that Passover was yesterday and we are in the days of unleavened bread. You are the sainted body and God is depending on you and I know you coming through. I know you've already been praying. I know you've already been interceding. I ask you right now rebuke fear and and pick up faith. Pick up faith and rebuke fear. Do not fear. Don't allow yourself to tremble. We're not ignorant concerning Satan's devices. We know this enemy wants us to quail and to tremble. Pick up faith in this word. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word of God. The word of God. Read it daily. Read the gospels. Strap on your faith. Pick up your sword. Pick up your shield. Pick up your helmet. Uh, gird your loins uh, put the preparation of the gospel read the gospel walk in the gospel work in the gospel stretch forth your hand in praise and sing it says when they began to sing cut caught from Zion when they began. Do you know the word began means I set a point in time to do this. When you have faith, you'll obey God and you'll just do it. I ain't got no question. I ain't wondering and I ain't doubting. When God says begin to sing, sing child, sing. But what do I sing? He said he's appointed unto us a song to sing and that is the Lord is good. And his mercy endureth. The Lord is good and his mercy endureth to all generations. You say, well, I, 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 he has been good to me. Well, that's the song you sing. You sing his goodness. You sing his mercy. And you praise him. Well, if you need some backup, go to Psalms 136 and read the fifth song book of the psalm, the book of Psalms, and read the litany, the litany of the things that the saints sang. Huh? Saints of the most God. He said he's going to set ambush. He's going to set ambush if we sing and if we praise him. I'm of the Lord Jesus to him that smote the Egyptians, to him who brought Israel out of the midst of the depths of their crucifying and their crucible of Tessa for his mercy endureth forever. Who him who had divided the Red Sea because his mercy endureth forever. For him who caused him to pass through the midst of the sea for his mercy endureth forever. He overthrew Pharaoh. He can overthrow coronavirus. Saints, you have the power. Sing. Sing to the Lord. Praise. Praise the Lord. Worship the God Almighty. Mm. His mercy endureth forever. He stretched out his hands across the floods. His mercy endureth forever. Look what he's done in your house and tell him, I'm going to praise you because your mercy endureth forever. I still got a roof over my head because your mercy endureth forever. I still got health in my body because your mercy endureth forever. I still got my children, my family around about me because your mercy endureth forever. Oh, that Lord because his mercy endureth forever. Forgiveness, saints, to him who led the people through the wilderness. Ah, for him who smote the great kings. For him who smote 
famous kings. Uh, this king that's riding the globe now wants to be famous, uh, but he'll be upset, overturned, and pulled down uh, because the saints will apply themselves. Uh, sing, children. Uh, sing. Uh, sing praises. Uh, those of you that play instruments, uh, sing vocally. Uh, get on the line and sing songs uh, because his mercy endureth forever. Play your instruments uh, because his mercy endureth forever. What great God we have. Uh, clap your hands. Uh, dance and sing before the Lord. Uh, praise him. Lift him. Exalt him. Extol him. He's good and his mercy endureth forever. Sainted body of the Lord. And then God said, I'll set ambush. Uh, what I will do, uh, I will set that thing up uh, and I will literally expiate. Uh, I will destroy. I will eradicate. Uh, I will abolish. Uh, I will vanquish. Uh, I will overturn. Uh, I will do in. Uh, I will draw out. Uh, I will bind. Uh, I will cast out. Uh, I will cast down. Uh, excuse me, saints. Uh, he will stretch out his hand and do what he said he will do. Has God ever lied? 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 Has God ever failed? Has he ever failed? Saints, has he ever failed? Has God ever failed? Has he ever drew back? Is God a coward? Is God afraid? Is God afraid of this enemy? Absolutely not. God wants to hear from his children. I know you're talking to him. I know you love him. But I want you to know how much he loves you. I want you to know he loves you uh, and stretch out your song uh, and stretch out your praise uh, and give God all the praise and all the glory. All the glory and the praise uh, belongs to our God. He is our Father. Hmm. Now those of you that are listening that are backsliders, you come home. We need you. You get out of that thicket and you come home. Get out of that. And you come home, we need you. And we still love you. How can we not love you? We've fallen a thousand times ourselves. Uh, and we reconcile you back to the body of Christ. Uh, and we embrace you. Now those of you that do not know him in the pardoning of your sins. Uh, I ask you to now come. Come to Jesus right now. And repent of your sins. Uh, and declare and receive him as Lord and Savior. Tell the Lord now. I want you to be my savior. I repent of my sins. I want you to be Lord of my life, not just for now, but for the rest of my life. Lead me and show me how to live holy and I'll surrender my life for you ever, my life to you forever and ever. Just a moment in a rhema from God. Just a moment and a rhema from God for the sainted body of the believers. I'm giving you only what God said give, and I'm stepping away, and I'm coming back into prayer. I love you, but I want you to know everywhere you are, God is with you. If we'll obey this, and I know we will, we already got the victory. We already got the victory. Love you. Call my name out. I'm calling out your name every day, every day, praying for the saints. I love you. Bye-bye.